In this video, we are considering the venous return. In simple terms, the return of blood from all the parts of the body through veins back to the heart. Remember, a vein is any blood vessel that transports blood towards the heart. Towards, towards the heart. When we consider the blood pressure in our blood vessels, if this is a simple graph, and we have the iota, from the iota, we form arteries, we form an artery, from arteries, we form arterioles. From arterioles, we form capillaries. In the systemic circulation, we shall call them systemic capillaries. Whereas in the pulmonary circulation, we shall call them pulmonary capillaries. So we form capillaries. Then, from the capillaries, we form venules. Then, from venules, we form veins that go back to the heart. So, what is happening in the cardiovascular system? Blood is moving from the heart, away from the heart, from the arterioles, sorry, from the arteries, from the iota, moving to the, arter to the arteries, moving to the arterioles, moving to the capillaries, moving to the venules, moving to the veins, and then back to the heart. When we are to consider the blood pressure in these different points of our blood vessels, the blood pressure is going to be highest. That is, both the systemic and diastolic blood pressure would be highest in the iota, being at around 110. 110, 120 millimeters of mercury. And this would start gradually reducing as you move towards the veins. And by the time we reach the veins, by the time we reach the veins, you would notice that the blood pressure inside the veins would be approximating to zero. The blood pressure inside the veins would be approximating to zero. But remember, the veins are containing blood, which blood has to be transported to the heart. Imagine the veins, the femoral vein, we shall see it in the systemic saturation. Imagine such a vein, which is located just in the thighs, in the thighs. So the pressure is at zero. But that blood inside that vein has to move from down against a force called gravity to the heart. So this vein is transporting blood which is at a pressure of zero. But this blood has to overcome gravity to go back to the heart. So here we come up with certain mechanisms. The body had to develop specific mechanisms that assist in the transportation of blood back to the heart through the veins and these mechanisms we shall in simple terms give them a subheading as the determinants of factors influencing venous return factors influencing venous return so we shall we specifically have three factors that influence venous return. The first factor is position of the body. Blood that goes to the upper part of the body comes back to the heart through veins known a spatula vein known as the superior vena 
cover. And it is assisted by a force known as gravity, that is a natural force. And there is something amazing which I remember about gravity. You know, I couldn't imagine that I would one time speak the word gravity in medicine. I thought it would end in physics, but it's also there in medicine, gravity. So, gravitational force does not end in the physics. So, this gravitational force is going to assist blood to come back from the upper part of the body, to come back from the head and the neck. So, blood comes back from the head and the neck to the superior vena cava and finally to the right atria by the help of free fall under the assistance of gravitational force. But when we take a situation in which an individual is standing, blood in the head will be moving towards the heart by the help of gravitational force. But the blood in the lower part of the body, for example, in the upper limbs, let's take a situation where the individual is standing in an anatomical position. Anatomical position, this is where an individual is standing erect. For example, the way I am, with the palms facing outwards. So the palms are facing outwards and on the sides of the body and with the feet together. So the person is in an erect position. So let's take such a situation where the individual is in an erect position. That is the anatomical position. The blood coming from the lower parts of the body towards the heart will be under a restriction of a force gravity. As gravity is assisting blood to come back from the head and neck towards the heart, it is again restricting blood coming from the lower parts of the body back to the heart. So, this can be motivated by any individual being in a, a prone position. You can be in a prone or supine position. You can sleep, you can be flat. You can be flat, you sleep. And this would reduce the gravitational effect onto the movement of blood, onto the venous return of blood from the lower parts of the body. The second factor which is affecting venous return is the pulmonary pump. In some books, or rather textbooks, it is called the respiratory pump. So, with the respiratory pump, as the individual is breathing in and out, as you are breathing in and out, as you are breathing in and out, if this is our thoracic region, we are just taking a simple illustration. This is our thoracic region and it has ribs in it. And this is our abdominal region. Let's imagine this person has Parts. So this is our abdominal region and this is our thoracic region. The individual has external intercostal muscles and internal intercostal muscles surrounding the ribs. So as the individual is breathing in, as you breathe in, here we have our diaphragm which separates. The diaphragm is separating the thoracic region from the abdominal region. So, as you are breathing in, the diaphragm, the ducts are going to expand and the diaphragm is going to move downwards. It's going to move downwards. The diaphragm, this one, it will move downwards into the abdominal region. And when the diaphragm moves downwards into the abdominal region, it is going to exert pressure onto the abdominal region, onto the structures in the abdomen. And this pressure is going to be scientifically, anatomically termed to as intra-abdominal pressure. So, this intra-abdominal pressure is going to be exerted onto the structures in the abdominal region. And some of these structures are the blood vessels. The veins bringing back blood to the heart that pass through the abdominal region. So this pressure, the intra-abdominal pressure is going to exert onto those veins. 
And when it exerts onto those veins, it means the pressure on the veins in the abdomen will be higher than the pressure on the veins in the thoracic region. And when the pressure is higher in the abdomen than the thoracic region, blood is going to move from regions of high pressure to regions of low pressure. So blood will move from the abdominal region where there is high pressure into the thoracic region where there is relatively low pressure. So, how will this movement be ensured to be a one-directional movement? When we consider the structure of the veins, the veins, in them, they have valves. They have valves. These valves, the main aim of the valves is to prevent backflow of blood. So, when pressure is applied onto this vein, for example, and it's containing blood, what will happen? The blood, first of all, the pressure will be distributed throughout the blood in all directions. So some of the blood will be trying to move upwards and some of it will try to move downwards. So the blood which will be trying to move downwards will end up shutting the valves closed. The valves will be shut closed. Oh, but the blood that is trying to move downwards. Whereas the blood that will try to move upwards, it will open the valves above them open. Poof. So blood will be moving only in one direction. So it is a one directional movement of blood through the veins by the assistance of the valves restricting backflow restricting regurgitation of blood then still as you are breathing in and out as you are breathing in and out what is happening the thoracic region is expanding as it expands it creates a negative pressure so a negative pressure is created inside the thoracic region And this negative pressure will be exerted onto all the structures in the thoracic region. Hence, blood will start moving from all other regions of the body where pressure might be higher than the pressure in the thorax, which has become negative towards the thorax. So, blood will move from blood vessels, the veins in the abdominal regions and in the upper parts of the body, all moving towards the heart, towards the thoracic region. Yeah, that is the pulmonary pump. Then, the other factor which is determining or the other determinant of venous return is muscular contraction. Muscular contraction. When we consider our blood vessels, most especially the veins in the body, we have two types of veins in the body. We have what we call the, super, the superficial veins. The superficial veins. They are found on the surface. The ones that you can see. For example, if you go to a clinic and you are cannulated in case you are sick and you go to a clinic and they are to apply fluids onto you. They are to give you, for example, linguas lactate or normal saline or even give you an intravenous injection. They would probably cannulate you using superficial veins, veins that are located on the surface, the ones that you can easily see on your surface. They're known as the superficial veins. But we also have another type of veins known as the deep veins. And for the case of the deep veins, uh, these ones are actually located deep in the muscles within our skeletal muscles. They are located deep in the skeletal muscles They cannot be seen on the surface. They can't be seen on the surface So these deep veins if we are to take their structure We would see them in such a format the deep vein would be moving with its valve pointing towards the heart And they have branches from the superficial veins. They have branches draining them from the superficial vein. So this is our superficial vein and this is our deep vein. So they keep their, they are connected. And around the deep vein, we have skeletal muscles surrounding the deep vein. Skeletal muscles. So we have skeletal muscles surrounding the deep vein. 
So what is happening in this case is that the skeletal muscles are, had, are going to undergo contraction. They will keep contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing. As these skeletal muscles keep on contracting and relaxing, as they keep on contracting and relaxing, they are going to apply pressure onto our deep veins. When they apply pressure onto the deep veins, the pressure, first of all, in the initial stages, it's going to be normally distributed all across the blood in the vein. So blood will try to move in all directions. But the one moving downwards, it will be, the backflow will be restricted by the valves. The valves are going to restrict backflow. They will prevent it from moving backwards. But again, the blood that is moving forward will, be, will have free movement. The valves will allow free movement of any blood moving forward. So it will keep on moving forward until it reaches the heart. Until it reaches the heart. So those were the mechanisms of venous return. Uh, one thing we can note out is that in case an individual has a high deficiency of calcium ions, a very high deficiency of calcium ions, there is a possibility that these people will have difficulty in muscular contraction. Their muscular contraction may be uncoordinated. It, may be, it will be uncoordinated. Therefore, chances will be high that these individuals will have a poor venous return. Poor venous return. As far as deep veins are concerned from the lower parts of the body, the venous return is going to be very poor. Most especially from the upper limbs and the lower limbs they will have a poor venous return because the skeletal muscles will not be contracting in the way they are expected to contract. So, there may be accumulation of fluids in the lower parts of the body. At times, edema may result. Edema. Edema. So, thank you very much. I remain clinician Birunji Raven. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It will be so supportive to the channel. Thanks.